Hi, my name is Angelica and I would like you to meet my friend Elizabeth. Elizabeth just had a cesarean section under spinal anesthesia. She was not able to take care of her newborn child immediately, had difficulty in breastfeeding, and was not able to mobilize immediately because of the pain post-operatively. Several reports indicate that pain management is insufficient among 50 to 70 percent of patients undergoing all types of surgery. To help women like Elizabeth, Bowen Nicholson and company made a study to find out if the injection of pipivacaine adrenaline close to the fascia reduces remorphine requirements after cesarean section. The study involved 684 consecutive women scheduled for cesarean section that were screened for eligibility and 260 healthy women who met the inclusion criteria were enrolled in the study and verbal and informed consent were taken. Randomization was performed in blocks of 20 to ensure that the same number of participants would be allocated to receive either of the two study treatments. Each randomization number had a corresponding sealed opaque envelope containing information on the study treatment. The envelope was then opened by the nurse in the operating theater who also prepared the blinded syringes with the study drug before other staff involved in the procedures entered the operating room. The obstetrician performing the cesarean section received the field anonymous syringe and administered the blinded injection which contained 40 ml of bevivacaine 2.5 mg per ml with adrenaline 5 microgram per ml or 40 ml normal saline solution and administered with an injection needle reaching both the fascia and immediately above the fascia in the subcutaneous fat before closure of the wound. The women and all members of the staff responsible for post-operative care were blinded to the study treatment. Morphine consumption was the primary outcome. Pain intensity assessed by numerical rating scale as 10 being the worst pain and 0 is no pain and parameters related to mobilization of the women were considered secondary outcome variables. All of the women were given spinal anesthesia, 1.8 to 2.6 mils depending on the body height in vertical bubivacaine followed by 0.3 mL fentanyl. During the study period, the protocol for pain treatment of women undergoing cesarean section was paracetamol as a single intravenous dose after the delivery of the baby and oral administration thereafter. Combined with intravenous rescue morphine, 1.0 mg per mL, one mil diluted with 9 mL 0.9% of normal saline solution until numerical rating scale estimation was at or below 3 for the first 24 hours after the operation. Pain at rest was then assessed every hour for the first 6 post-operative hours. When the woman reported NRS of 4 or above, she received intravenous morphine until pain intensity was NRS of 3 or below. Post-operative mobilization was defined as the time points when the woman was standing next to the bed and when walking around in the room for the first time. The statistical program IBM SPSS Statistics version 18.0 was used to conduct analysis between the two groups. The man with new test was used to analyze demographic data and two-tailed student's t-test to analyze morphine consumption and pain assessment by numerical rating scale. The results returned that there were no significant difference between the bepivacaine group and the placebo group in patient demographics concerning body mass index, age, gravidity, or parity, which indicates a successful randomization. Significantly, less morphine was required in the bepivacaine group than the placebo group at 0 to 12 hours, but not at 0 to 24 hours. When comparing the two groups at 0 to 6 hours, the average bepivacaine consumption to reach post-operative pain relief was lower than in the control group. The findings in this large single-center study confirm that an injection of local anesthetics in the surgical wound is a valuable regimen for post-operative analgesia during the first 12 hours after cesarean section performed under spinal anesthesia. It also shows that the bepivacaine group had significantly lower morphine consumption up to 12 hours post-operatively. The study also shows that infiltration with local anesthetics and adrenaline decreases their need of rescue opioids in the first 6 hours following surgery and women who were treated with a local injection of bepivacaine adrenaline also needed a lower number of morphine injections. 
The mobilization of the women may also be less restricted if they are given a single injection in the wound rather than carrying a PCA device. In conclusion, a single injection of bupivacaine with adrenaline in the surgical wound decreases the need for morphine requirements for the first 12 post-operative hours and contributes to safe and effective pain management in women undergoing cesarean section. That is good news for Elizabeth and other women in the world.